I'm very happy to provide an introduction into the digital money project Libra in this webinar today. The Libra project has been initiated more than one year ago. So it has been in June 2019 by a consortium of different companies, for example, by Facebook. And since then, it has actually received a very high importance and also got lots of, um, lots of traction. There was also a very high critique from regulators about the Libra project. And this led to the fact that Libra has adjusted its concept just in April 2020 and has basically addressed the concerns by regulators. And what I'm going to do today is I will introduce you to the topic of Libra and will explain the main benefits and also potential risks stemming from the Libra project. If you want to learn about the vision and the motivation of Libra, it's very useful to go into the initial white paper, which has been released in 2019. And here, the goals and also the ways how this goal should be achieved are basically mentioned and explained in a very nice manner. And here it says, in terms of better financial inclusion, many more people should have access to financial services and to cheap capital. This is to be achieved through a currency built on a secure and stable open source blockchain, the so-called Libra blockchain, backed by a reserve of real assets, the so-called Libra reserve, and governed by an independent association, the so-called Libra association. And by this quote, you basically see the two main important aspects and the two official goals of the Libra project. The first one is to increase the amount of people with access to financial services. Therefore, financial inclusion is one of the main motives driving this Libra project. And besides financial inclusion, it should also create possibilities to transact money and to get access to cheap capital. So to provide a cheap, safe, and also an efficient payment infrastructure. And this is the second goal of Libra. So Libra also aims to decrease transaction costs to provide an efficient means of payment, which can also be used, for example, for worldwide payments and also gross border payments. And these two goals, this official mission of the Libra project is to be achieved by these three ingredients I just explained and I just mentioned in the quote. The first one is the technology. So the Libra project will be based on a distributed ledger technology, the so-called Libra blockchain. And the Libra association basically um, mentions that this technological choice leads to the fact that many transfers can be done in an efficient manner and also be on a very cheap basis transacted. Besides this technological choice, another very important pillar is the Libra reserve. As here, as it said, Libra will be backed by a reserve of real assets. Therefore, Libra can be classified as a stablecoin, meaning it's a, a token, a digital token based on blockchain technology, which has some mechanism insights to stabilize the price. Therefore, the price of the Libra token is expected to be relatively stable. And this is why the Libra reserve as a collateral is very important in this context. And besides the Libra reserve, the third pillar is the governance. This is the Libra association. And this is also the first point for today I want to discuss in detail. The Libra association is the governance body behind this Libra project and is located in Switzerland. The Libra Association consists of um, 27 members, and this also includes Facebook. And this is very important here because it also see that it's not just Facebook. This is very often discussed in, in the media, also in, in papers, that it's basically the Facebook project, but it's not. So Facebook is one member out of this currently 27, but not more and also not less. And until the point where Facebook intends to go live with this project, and also not just Facebook, but the whole Libra Association, the Libra Association should grow to an amount of 100 members. Therefore, Facebook will even kind of lose of power, relatively speaking, because the amount of members of the Libra Association is expected to increase. And when you see, when you look at this consortia, do you see that there are different types of companies? So it's e-commerce companies, it's payment companies, it's also some part of NGOs. There are some blockchain developing companies. So it's really a, a nice mixture with lots of companies which also have a very large user base. And besides Facebook, you might also know then very um, big player as a Spotify, for example, or Uber, which are also part of the Libra Association and therefore belong to the governance system behind Libra. 
if you now as a client want to transact Libra to a friend, for example, then of course you have to have the Libra in the first place to spend. And for this, you need a phone. This is basically, basically everything you need. You need a phone and you need internet um, access. And then you can transfer the Libra units to, your, to client B or to your friend. And this basically is based on a very interesting and also a, um, not too, too easy to understand process in the back because first the Libra has to be created before you can transact the Libra. And this happens in the setup that the client basically transacts and um, deposits basically fiat currencies on his digital wallets. So for example, provides Euro to the digital wallet and this digital wallet is hosted by the so-called virtual asset service provider. They are, for example, um, exchanges where you can buy a Libra or also the parties where you can hold your wallet. These exchanges then, also wallet providers, the VASPs, then forward this money to the so-called designated um, dealers. And the designated dealers are entity, are the only entity which interacts with the Libra Association. And what they basically do is they take the fiat money they have received from the VASPs and go to the secondary market and buy financial assets from these fiat currencies. And these financial assets are then brought to the Libra Association. And the Libra Association then in response mints or creates the Libra coins. And this is really essential because this shows that Libra is backed by financial assets and this makes Libra a stable coin. And also that Libra is 100% backed because there's also partly be some discussion about will Libra be 100% backed, will there be money creation on Libra, but this is not the topic. Libra will be 100% backed by financial assets. And I will explain more about what kind financial of financial asset this is in the next webinar series. When now the Libra Association has minted the Libra coins, they are transferred to the designated dealers and they then forward the Libra coins to the virtual asset service providers and then they transfer the money back in Libra to the client A. And then now the client A is pretty happy because he has converted the fiat money to Libra and can now transact in Libra. Okay, so this is how this process in the, in the back end works. And this is very important to understand which players are involved in the Libra ecosystem and also which role the financial assets for the Libra project have because they are actually out of very, very high importance. Right, so the Libra project has actually lots of benefits which have also been discussed in the literature, also in, in lots of webinars, and I would like to summarize them um, in the next few minutes. The first one is that Libra basically has improved the understanding and awareness of cryptocurrencies and also of the distributed ledger technology in general. So what Libra basically did is it did very good education for DLT and for crypto assets. Even if Libra is completely different than crypto assets as Bitcoin or Ether, it still uses some kind of DLT or blockchain system and therefore it has raised the awareness with respect to the technology. It did also some education with respect to DLT and also cryptocurrencies. Besides that, Libra was also um, a very important competitor and is now kind of expected to also increase efficiency in payment markets because new competitors now have reacted to the Libra project by announcing their own pro projects. And this is, for example, also central banks because as a reaction to Libra, lots of central banks also started to consider issuing their own digital money, their own digital currencies, so-called central bank digital currencies or CBDCs. Therefore, Libra can also be seen as an accelerator with respect to central bank digital currencies. But now there come the two actually, from my perspective, most important benefits. The first one is that Libra has the potential to lower transaction fees for cross-border payments. There is a study by the World Bank which indicates that currently 7% fees are charged on average for cross-border payments in the, on, in the whole world. And this is a lot. So if you think about the really poor people developing and emerging economies, they have to pay on average 7% fee for transacting money. And this is really a lot. And this is from my perspective, really insane. So the Libra Association says, well, we can do it better. We can create a more efficient payment system where we can in the end then maybe do this without any fees for the end users, or at least with having a lower fee than 7%. Besides that, Libra also provides a very stable means of payment because Libra is, as I said, a stable coin and therefore has a relatively stable value. And this is, a very high benefit. For example, if you compare this 
to very weak national currencies and some developing and emerging economies, which fluctuate and also have depreciated quite strongly in the last few years, because then the end user in these countries could use Libra to, to store value and therefore to, to um, kind of yeah, save um, money for um, yeah, some, some future, right? And this is also where Libra is a very, very um, good and promising project. Besides, Libra also provides a tremendous benefit with respect of providing a stable means of payment. Because Libra is designed as a stable coin and provides therefore a stable means of payment, for example, compared to yeah, very unstable or weak currencies in developing and emerging economies, for example, in Venezuela or Zimbabwe. Therefore, one could expect that the end user really uses Libra in these countries to store value, to store wealth, and to save basically for the future. Besides that, also financial inclusion is a very important aspect and can also be increased with Libra. At this point, about 2 billion people are currently unbanked and do not have access to financial infrastructure. And here for Libra, you only need a phone and internet access. So you do not need a bank account, for example. Besides these tremendous benefits, Libra also has lots of risks and they actually have been addressed by policymakers and have been criticized heavily. So the first one is that financial power shifts from the public to the private sector because Libra is also competing with bank money and also with, um, with cash because lots of remittances are also done with cash these days. Therefore, Libra is basically an, inf an innovation from the private sector, which is used for um, then money transfers. Therefore, it shifts power from the public sector, the central banks, to the private sector. And this was perceived as a risk mainly by central bankers and also by regulators. Besides that, also data privacy is an issue because as I've stated in the beginning, Libra Association acts as validating nodes. Therefore, transactions in Libra are basically confirmed by these entities. Therefore, they have to have access to financial data because otherwise they cannot confirm the transactions. And here, of course, is potentially misuse possible to really use this financial data also for business purposes. And this is something the regulator also has to address. Besides that, there are also risks with respect to default because the Libra is also backed by um, government bonds, which I will in detail explain in the next webinar. Um, and therefore has risks with respect to default when these government bonds default. However, it's really secure government bonds with a very good, good rating. Therefore, this, this rather, rather seems unlikely. As the last point, there are also exchange rate risks because Libra is backed by different fiat currencies and therefore denominated in one fiat currency, um, the price basically fluctuates. And this is why, for example, there are exchange rate risks with respect to the euro or also to the US dollar. This webinar was actually here to give you an introduction into the Libra topic to discuss the most important benefits, also the most important risks. But at this day, it's really too early to say if benefits or risks are overweigh because real Libra is not live yet and regulators have, have not classified Libra um, yet. Therefore, it remains unclear if benefits or risks are currently main important. In the next webinar, we will talk about the Libra Reserve and the composition of the Libra stablecoins, because this is a very, very interesting and also very relevant feature of the Libra token.